Hello guys and welcome back. This is going to be our first tutorial regarding the RPG Maker VX Ace application. Um, I just barely downloaded it and installed the uh, trial for it today. Um, I haven't got my own copy of it yet uh, and uh, I'm going to, I, I hopefully will be getting it soon but uh, going to Vegas next week and so I, yeah, <laughs> figure I probably ought to save my money for that. Anyways, um, so what we're going to be doing today is going to be doing a little bit of uh, a review. Um, the The idea here is is that what we want to do is we want to get you familiar with the changes that uh, VX has made to the scripting system without going in too much detail, um, but um, more so how it relates back to VX and XP. Um, so that you can kind of understand exactly see how things are built. So um, the easiest thing to do is to really start down here at main. And sorry, I'm using a just the the new well in Windows 7 the uh, uh, the new magnifier, and so I'm trying to get used to that. But anyway, so um, in the main process here, we have got just RGSS main which is a method call to the um, to the main object, the game object. And it is saying scene manager dot run. Okay? Now if we look at the scene manager script all the way up here at the top and then we say run, the first things it does is initialize your database, detect and set up uh, MIDI usage if you apparently have that selected in your settings and then it will create the first scene which could be of any class so that's kind of actually a nice feature so if you wanted it to be a map you can have it be a map and all you have to do is change um, this first scene class which down here so if we take that and we just if you do control F and do a find the first scene class here is determine whether it's scene battle or scene title so technically if you wanted to do a scene, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, map as your first scene, all you'd have to do is say uh, override this scene first class and modify it with your own method to say, all right, well, start as a map, and that's it. Um, so you'd do scene map right here, and then of course from your map you'd want to do your own title, etc., inside of that, and then make sure, of course, that you initialize everything. Um, through the uh, through the title, but uh, for the most part, that should I mean, and really for the most part, does take care of everything. So, anyways, um, and then it will just say run main as long as seen, okay, um, and then and that is always the case. So while main, okay, so if we come back here and we look at scene base. The main method will run start post start update as long as it's not seen changing. Seen changing is entirely is is the current scene me or is it someone else? If it's not me or self in this case then it will return false in which case it does not update. This is actually just some debugging I threw in there earlier um, to get the information out to make sure exactly that it was truly disposing every scene in between. So the reason I did that actually was uh, because here in a little while, um, maybe not this tutorial, but uh, here in the near future, I plan to start rewriting the uh, GTBS or the GooBD's Tactical Battle System. And as we rewrite that, I needed to know whether or not, when you left this scene, whether or not it would um, dispose of the main scene. Now, the reason I need to know that is because. Um, there's been a lot of request for a like when you go into the battle and you actually perform an attack rather than performing an attack on the map you want it to zoom into its own little scene and then perform the attack um, like the uh, Shining Force series and so 
Um, that's one of the features I plan to be adding to that, and so I just needed to know whether or not it disposes of the scene every time when you leave it, so that I need to make some sort of a save routine to say, okay, well, now resume battle from where you left off so that it doesn't have to recreate everything. Um, so that's kind of the general gist of uh, that and what, what was going on there. But uh, anyway, so either way, it will start, it will post start, it will run the update, it will pre-terminate and then terminate, and then the next time the main runs, it will be the other scene and in which case then that scene will start, post start, etc. and go through the update routine as long as it's that scene and then pre-terminate, terminate. So that's kind of the way the scene base kind of helps manage things. Now there are a couple other changes here and that is that, um, and I don't think it's actually inside of here, oh here we go, return scene. So we've got the scene manager dot return method. Now the scene manager is actually kind of a nifty little thing because what it allows you to do is remember what is the previous scene you were in. So you don't have to say go back to the menu at this option because it just says go back to the menu. You might have to still specify what option you wanted to go back to. I haven't looked into it uh, too much but it basically allows you to go to another class which is just to switch it um, completely and remove uh, the history of what's currently there or you can say call a new scene which case it will call a new scene on top of the current one so um, when you say return it will make the scene equal to the previous scene which had called the one you're in so uh, and then of course clear which will clear out your stack and exit which is um, to close the game um, because as soon as scene is equal to nil then it will stop running main and then it will drop out of that uh, up here at the top. So it's while scene main as soon as it stops that then the run method stops and as soon as the run method stops you go out and it is the very last line of course and so it stops. So that's kind of that's kind of uh, just a very quick rundown of uh, some of the new changes. Now, one of the other things that um, I found really, really helpful in uh, this update is this new um, add, uh, what did they call it? It was, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, it was something along the lines of add handle. Here we are, set handler. So set handler, and I don't know if uh, any of you guys are familiar with uh, C Sharp or uh, C++, but the basic idea is that you will provide it a symbol. That symbol will then be presented in the window as an option. And then, um, so this could be okay, this could be item, it could be skill, it could be equip, um, exit, save, etc. So this is kind of what they use to build the the menu system in uh, VX Ace. Um, and when you do that, you set a method to be called. So, if like I was saying, is if you're familiar with C Sharp and C++, this is exactly like assigning an event uh, to, um, or I'm sorry, an event listener. So you would go in and instead of you know specifying the symbol, you'd do the plus equal, and then you would provide the event handler. So this is pretty much exactly like that, where this is the event handler, although it doesn't actually take arguments. It always has to be a, uh, in C sharp, it'd be void, but yeah. So that that's kind of the, the general gist of this. And so it will, um, upon calling that, it will just say call that particular method, which that method will then execute from the main scene on a separate thread. So it allows you to effectively multi-thread your system. So that's the idea behind it, um, and it, it uh, actually makes for a vast improvement as far as how quickly your script, scripts run, um, because of course they're running on a separate thread and whatnot, but um, the the biggest point is, is that, of course, it makes it actually easier to read, especially for multi-language scripts. So take, for example, here the window command. By default, it says, you know, add command, you specify the name, what the symbol is, whether it's enabled or not, right? Now, 
if you wanted to just specify um, what a command name is or whatever, but let's look at the menu here. So let's scroll down and we're going to open the menu base. So here, when we initialize the menu, it says start, create the background, which sets the map in the background of the window. And then it says um, set the current actor equal to the game menu actor. So that's how they remember what actor was previously selected. So the menu actor is uh, kind of maintained in that process. So the create background of course here goes and gets the background from the map and assigns it to this background sprite which of course is just set at the background and then they gray it, um, kind of gray it out. So, oops. So let's see, so if we come on down here and we go to the actual menu. Now we can say create command window, which is right here, and it's and right here you've got your methods. So here we've got set handler, which I was talking about earlier, and we've got colon item. Now this is basically saying this is a symbol. Okay, so this item should then be associated with the menu item. Uh, I'm sorry, the method command item. So if we copy this and then we do a search we will find that method right here saying hey call this um, call this new scene if your selection was item and likewise that's exactly how it goes through the rest of the process so um, like command personal in this case here basically says okay well now that you're done with that now create this status window and make it active so that the cursor is over there and then give you the OK and cancel options. Now OK just means that you can press enter and it'll take it or you can press C and it'll cancel out. Um, and so that's that's all those two options are. It just allows you enter and cancel uh, effects. But when you do that, when you say OK, it will say run the on personal OK. Now if we take a look at that, this will remind us of the way it looked in RPG Maker VX uh, or even XP where it basically says hey check the current symbol or in in the case of um, XP it would be the index of the symbol in which case you would say well when zero in which case uh, RMXP or even VX actually used uh, just the index and so you'd say when zero or item then go to the item in this case it just says skill which was uh, in RMVX and XP was index of one because it was the second item in the list remember it always starts at zero but anyway so this one here kind of gives us a uh, access to see what symbol should be executing what particular scene and then of course it just has to say scene manager call that scene and because everything actually maintains the menu actor um, then the menu actor will of course be the actor who is currently selected in the dialogue so um, I haven't actually done all the the lookup on that to see exactly where it's assigned at but um, it, it must be assigned um, somewhere within here I'm assuming in the window menu base because uh, in that process it has now see we are here we are next actor and previous actor and that will set the next menu actor so by doing that that's actually how it does the um, the determination of um, what uh, actor is selected when you jump to another scene so that's kind of kind of the gist of that so this on actor change is the one that's actually modified over here and wow okay so anyways I think that's kind of a bit of enough of review um, so let's go ahead and get into it um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to start building of course our uh, new version of GTBS so that is actually where we are going to start um, this is actually another uh, script uh, a friend of mine was working on his uh, name is uh, Leatherface or that's what he goes by and um, the basic gist of this one is that it will display a map for you um, on the screen kind of similar to what you've got with uh, 
like uh, the Zelda series, um, but each of these here will actually pull open a um, map file out of your uh, pictures directory and display it, and then it'll put an icon onto the map indicating your location on that particular map. So um, it, it, it's very much just a like a Zelda uh, type system as far as how it uh, how it acts, but uh, yeah. So uh, he was just uh, asking me about.